Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Bound to Talk Football. I'm your host, Blake Walker, alongside Paul Erridge. Appreciate everyone for tuning in tonight. Well, actually, this morning when you watch it. Paul and I are recording this as of 10.54 this evening. Had a couple things that came up here on our Thursday, and then I had to watch the end of Thursday Night Football that went into overtime. So (laughs) Um, we're coming off our uh, Dome Pick episode and we're going to just jump right in. We're going to jump right in. It is week six. 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 Week six. <laughs> it's been a hot, quick start to the season. We're moving quick, and uh, it's time to look at what we have ahead on the docket. We'll start out with Class 5A. Pleasant Valley at 4-1 and one is taking on 2-3 and three Cedar Falls. We'll be running through quick previews. We'll give our picks of this game. Paul Cedar Falls has had a very, very up-and-down season. They're on three straight losses to Centennial, Liberty, and Linmar. Two of those games they lost by less than a possession. They lost in Centennial. It's 31-14. to 14. They do have wins over Prairie and Johnston. PV's only loss is Bentendorf. They've been cruising ever since. Yeah, uh, it's hard to look at Cedar Falls' schedule just seeing. I, th- I think every single one of those teams is quality, which is kind of tough for a team to not have a single game where they can say, we're definitely going to win. Just every game for them has been tough. Um, Devarian Clark's been great this year, and Pleasant Valley's just been a wrecking ball ever since that Benton North loss. Uh, that Liberty win is huge. Beating Prairie handily is pretty big, and then Dubuque Senior, we expect them to beat. Um, two teams that really like to run the ball, uh, they do it at a really efficient clip at 6.2 yards per carry for PV and 6.6 yards per carry for Cedar Falls. Um, it's a tough, it's PV is just only run the ball. Uh, they're only 34 t- attempts on the year. They're basically that's yeah. that's the offense, and then Cedar yeah. Falls a little more capable at quarterback. But um, the the main thing this uh, game will be, I think, the the rushing attack. How each team defends the rushing attack because that's the ma- their main point of offense. Um, Blake, who who do you got? I got PV on the road. I think. Uh... Cedar Falls is going to be one of those teams that's going to be really high up in the RPI, despite being, well, this would have them at two and four. Um, I don't know what the back half of their schedule looks like, but I hope it evens up for their sake because I think they could legit make the playoffs at four and five, maybe. Um, I like PV. I have them going to the Dome, so I I, I got to keep my <laughs> up on them. Uh, I'm, I might make an upset pick here, I think. Right. I, I like Cedar Falls' defense. Uh, with Dellinger a little bit. I know they've, they've given up some some points this year, so I can't really say that super confidently. It is a homecoming game in Cedar Falls. Ooh, first one of the I, think, I think they may be circled this one, but I'm, I'm starting off bold. I think it's a close game, but it, it's going to be low. I feel – Every time I say low scoring, just they both. both teams. <laughs> I think it'll be high scoring, personally. I just feel yeah, like that's what like PB and Cedar Falls have been doing. I'm so year. used to like college football where if two teams run the ball. Exclusive yeah, now, it's, it's not low scoring, yeah. but that's just not how it works in high school. No. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we split our fit picks the first one. Three and two Southeast Polk heads to three and two Johnson. This was a thriller last year, if you remember. Uh, they almost upset Southeast Polk last year. This is such a fun game. Southeast Polk is coming off the win against Sioux City East. They also beat Centennial. And then Johnston is on a heater right now. They beat Ankeny and Waukee and only gave up 14 points combined. So, really, the Johnston defense is on fire right now. Um, Will Nuss is playing really well. The offense is starting to kind of figure things out. But last week, Southeast Polk looked pretty good. I mean, Holden Hansen looked at his best. Sam Zelenovich is obviously the top wide receiver in the class. Um this is a really tough one. I, I'm going to roll with the Dragons. <laughs> I think Johnston does get this one, but I think it'll be really close again. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually going to agree with you. I like the Dragons here. I, I mainly think that because Will Nuss, I believe, uh, he's just the better quarterback in this one for now. Holden Hansen's been getting better as the year goes on, but as things stand right now, I think Nuss is the better quarterback. And with this Johnson defense, ball hawking is their thing. And Holden Hanson been a little bit better. I don't think the picks have popped up, popped up last game, but he has thrown his handful of picks to start the year. He's got nine touchdowns and nine interceptions. So um, 
I think Johnson gets a win here. It's at Johnston. Um, I think they finally break through the the Southeast Poke hurdle that they've had for a little bit, where they just kind of can't can't beat him. They lost him in the dome a couple years ago. Uh, granted, they had Abu Sama, and they lost. Like, obviously, a really quick good game. So, give me the Dragons. Two and three Prairie versus two and three Ankeny. Uh, somebody, you need this win for the RPI. Both these teams do. There is a good chance that the loser is on the outside next Monday and the winner is on the inside. Ankeny won this game 17-14 last year. For some reason, I have no recollection of that game. Granted, it was in Prairie. Prairie mm-hmm. is coming off back-to-back losses to Pleasant Valley and Iowa City Liberty. They do have that win over Southeast Polk, which is just crazy. That'll be one of those like wild games we look back on. Ankeny gets the big win over Iowa City West. Uh, they've also beat Dowling. So they, they both have their, like, whoa, win. And they both have a couple losses that kind of stink for them. I think Ankeny's the better team. I think Ankeny's played good opponents. Not that Prairie has it, but I think Ankeny has played better teams. I know, obviously, their common denominator is Southeast Polk. But um, the Hawks might gain a little bit of momentum. Plus, it's a home game. Yep. I, I'm going to agree with you. I think this is kind of the the game that Ankeny, this stretch right here, that Ankeny's going to look at as their turnaround point. Um they do the Eastern Iowa teams. I think they they can beat Prairie. I'm pretty confident. And Iowa City West, we saw they had control of that game. 38-22 might even be a little bit of a soft box score. I think they. What was the score half? Is it was well, it was uh, Iowa City West scored fourteen in the fourth quarter. So yeah, oh, it yeah. was. So, yeah, take care. I'm, I think Larmy is good. I know Hankus is kind of back at running back for them too for that Iowa City West game. I like Ankeny, and I think Luke Anderson just he'll get it going at some point. Four and one Valley taking on two and three Waukee Northwest. I'll mention it again. Waukee Northwest looks like they we'll see how the RPI looks on Monday, but they're going to have to be the beat Valley or Centennial. I think the rest of the way now granted Waterloo West, if they keep winning, it might help them out a little bit. RPI mm-hmm. wise, same thing with the Tumwa. Um, Northwest won this game last year, 31 to 28. Matt Keitland this year, 1,142 yards. He's a good quarterback, man. He's going to be good here. Uh, Drake DeGroat has been unbelievable. Valley's only loss this year is the overtime loss to Dowling. They've taken care of Johnston, Waukee, beat Ames. They beat Southeast Polk. Uh, I got to roll with Valley. I know it's on the road, and I know Valley can shoot themselves in the foot, but I just feel like they're the better team here. Um, Not by much. Like, I don't think this will be a cakewalk, but I just think Valley's a little bit more equipped. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to agree with you here. I think the walking request secondary just isn't there with those wide receivers. I think offensively, the Tigers are just going to be able to kind of pass it at will. One thing I'm really worried about is the Tigers run game this year has just not been there. It's 3.8 yeah. yards a carry. Um, they haven't really found a true back to lean on yet. And that's a big part of uh, Swenson's offense. He needs a, he loves to be able to run the ball. Uh, any team really wants to be able to run the ball and, uh, Joaquin Earth West, I think you see this as a young team that's capable of competing with top tier talent. They just don't have that experience yet. I think it's a good game. I think I think Mac Heitland, Jordan Green, Brady Fitz, those guys all play up to a high level because they're playing a number one team in the state. But um, I just think Valley is too talented and I think they're going to run away with it at some point. Our 5A game of the week, Ankeny Centennial at 4-1. and We'll go to Valley Stadium to take on the 4-1 and Dowling Catholic Maroons. Centennial has only beaten Dowling twice since the school became a thing. Last time they beat them was 2018. Paul, stats say Centennial's better, uh, as you can see on the page. Mm-hmm. 665 passing yards, a little bit short, but they're running the rock really well. Really good on the rushing touchdown side. Um, Dowling's offense is not scoring a ton. Like, we're talking 24, 26, 16, 21, 37. And they scored 37 against a Roosevelt team that gives up like 55 points a game. Now, granted, it was 37 nothing at halftime. Dowling didn't do anything in the second half. But um, statistics say Centennial's the better team here. Yeah, and uh, I actually am going to go with the Jaguars here. I think yeah. I think they've played – that Ankeny game tells me a lot. And that's that tough. that that's a tough one to overlook with the Dowling struggling against Ankeny and Centennial beating Ankeny handily and outscoring them by 21 points in the second half week one. Um, just the rushing game for Dowling is just not there right now. I know we talked about it. I think preseason they're they're young on the offensive line. They've got a young, they've got a freshman right that was playing at tackle. 
or was yeah, supposed and to he's, be court. he's still very good. He is very yeah. good. Yeah, he's very good, but just it comes to a point where, especially with this Centennial team, their D-line and O-line, those guys have played for two or three years. And uh, Rashad Davis, amazing back. Uh, he's getting back into the swing of things. But I just think it's it's a tough ask for them to beat Centennial. I think Centennial is able to be more consistent on offense, which sounds kind of weird with the quarterback situation we have going on, but I think I think they get it done. If this game was in Centennial, I'd take the Jags, but it's in Valley. And I Dowling doesn't lose a Valley a lot. Um, gosh, I don't know the last time they lost a Valley. Might be that Abu Sama Southeast Polk game. Do not quote me on that. But, boy, it sure feels like it was a hot minute. Um, I still think Dowling can keep up up front. I, I truly do. Um, and I think Rashad Davis finally getting his legs underneath him will really help him a little bit. Um the Dowling defense is very good, man. I mean, I'm not I'm not throwing that past them. Uh, this year they've given up, let's see, 0, 14, 23, 23, 12. So, I mean, I think they have a lot in them. Um, I wanted to pick the Jags real bad, but I don't pick about, against Tom Wilson very often. I'm not going to do it today. Um, I think Dowling wins, but I think it'll be a very close game. And, again, yeah, it's, it's I agree. lean centennial. So. All right, we'll go to Class 4A. We'll start out North Polk at 5-0, and taking on Ballard, the Bombers, at 3-2. and This is a good Ballard team that you cannot slouch on. 3-2 and so far this season. They are led by Mason Gatchel. North Polk is literally run behind uh, Nathan Felderman. The kid has thrown for 403 yards, four touchdowns, but he's ran for 100, er, 801 yards and 12 touchdowns. I got to watch him last week against North uh, Des Moines North. Ballard coming off a big couple wins against Creston, Dallas Center Grimes, and Indianola. Their only losses are to Pella and Humboldt. North Polk has beaten Bondurant, Carlisle, Webster City, Humboldt, and Des Moines. North, North Polk won this game 17-14 last year. What do you think, Paul? I mean, this is uh, this is a good North Polk team. Um, they're good. Nathan Feldman is very good. But Ballard's still pretty sneaky here. Yeah, um, I'm going to go with the upset pick. It sounds crazy. And North Polk's five and zero, and a lot of people love them. But um, I think Ballard's getting hot right now with the back-to-back DCG and Indianola wins. My main my main reasoning is I think North Polk defensively might just not uh, that number against Bondurant and Carlisle. Carlisle maybe did that in garbage time. That kind of gets me because if Ballard's able to score and they have that defense, it's going to be tough to beat Ballard because that defense has been really good this year. Um, they've shut down some top tier talent against Crest and they gave up 28, but that was 15 points in the fourth. So I like the Bombers here as an upset pick. Uh, I think that the, you're playing into Ballard's strength with stopping the run here with North Polk. And uh, they're leaning on Nathan Feldman a lot. So I'm going to go with upset pick here and take the Bombers. So I forgot these two teams played twice last year. Ballard won the first game seven to six. <laughs> and then North Polk won the second game in the playoffs, 17-14. Uh, um, I didn't have, and I still don't have North Polk going to the dome, but I saw Nathan Feldman in person, and the dude is unbelievable. Now, if Nathan Feldman goes down, or Feldman goes down, uh, North Polk's in trouble because he is literally their entire offense. Um, also, he's pretty dang good on defense as well. But give me the comments. I think the comments can sneak out of here. Um, but Ballard will be fighting the RPI, and they should have a good case because I think they've turned out pretty well. Mm -hmm. Three and two Waverly Shell Rock taking on five and O oh, Decora. Uh, we might be on the same side here, Paul, but I think we see an undefeated team go down here. Uh, I think Waverly Shell Rock is very good. They got the win over Western Dubuque last night or uh, last week. Uh, Ethan Bibbler is running the rock, 756 yards, eight touchdowns. Decora is good, but the one score games are just the independence wins good, but like Crestwood, West Delaware. I don't know, man. I just feel like Waverly Shell Rock's on a roll right now. <laughs> yeah, I I really like actually Waverly the Shell Rock in this game. I think it's going to be a close one. I don't think this is one where uh, Waverly Shell Rock does what they did to Western Dubuque. I think Decora knows that they've been shaky and uh, they're going to play up a little bit because of that they also have the home field advantage there. Um, but I think they're, that Waverly Shell Rock defense has been kind of a, a – tough team or a tough team to score on they've only gave up 14 to xavier uh 24 north scott is a quite a bit but then six to bond durant beat clear lake and then six to western dubuque and that's a good western Dubuque team so i think they get it done um but i want to 
completely disregard decor. I think that, I mean, they're an undefeated team. I know it's kind of dumb to act like they're a super big underdog here, but uh, just those one score games, I think now this is the point where it adds up. Three and two North Scott host four, or excuse me, four and one North Scott host three and two Xavier. I have that wrong on the thing, but uh, Xavier goes to North Scott. Xavier won this game last year, 26 to 20. Uh, North Scott has a very good quarterback. Chase Smith, 13 touchdowns on the in the air, three on the ground. He really is a big part of their offense. 395, 94, excuse me, 945 yards passing, 255 yards on the ground. Evan Cruz is really good. I <laughs> This Xavier team is so young, Paul. <laughs> I mean, their quarterback, uh, Cash Parks, great name, sophomore. Their leading running back, junior, leading wide receiver, junior, and their leading tackler is a sophomore. Um, do the Saints get the job done here on the road, or are they just too young and maybe get them next year? <laughs> yeah, I think I think that they don't get it done this year. I think this North Scott team is legit. They're a good squad. They have some impressive wins against uh, Waverly Shell Rock and Assumption. Um, I I think this Xavier team is gonna be that team this year where you they're gonna walk into an RPI spot that a team. Yeah. Is going to be so mad that they're that, that the same spot. exact thing. Yeah, yep. they're they're a dangerous team. The RPI is gonna get them into the in the playoffs because they play good teams, and uh, they're gonna squeak out some wins here. So, if if I, they win, what? Go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say if they win this game, we're back to being Xavier's very very good. Um, I know you have them in the dome. Right? I do, and I'm gonna say the same exact thing. They are. They're four. They're five points away from being undefeated. Yeah. I mean, they only lost by. Or they only lost by four to Western Dubuque, who is very good. They lost to Pella, who's a big senior heavy team. They only lost by two. They beat Williamsburg, who oh by the way is like top two in Class Three A, and they beat Waverly Shell Rock, who's currently on a tear. I'm still gonna roll with the Saints. I think they're young, and I hate to say it, they're just gonna keep getting better every single week. Um, and I'm with you if they lose this game. They'll drop in the RPI, and you'll be like, "You don't want to face them." <laughs> I mean, I don't want to. I wouldn't want to face them. I mean, their back half of the schedule is Oskaloosa, Clear Creek, Amana, and Burlington. They're gonna so they're win gonna win three of those. Yeah. So this is a game where if they win, you're you're yeah. in a top five spot, probably. I'd say with two losses and both of those losses being very good teams, so the RPI yeah. will do them justice. So yeah, I'm gonna go with North Scott, but I think that. We kind of just talked about how Xavier's going to be a really good team come playoff day. Three and two, Indianola goes on the road and faces three and two, Boone, the Toreadors. Indianola is coming off a 16 14 loss to Ballard. They also lost by two to Pella. So they are four points away from being undefeated. They've been beat up with injuries this year. They take on a Boone team who has lost back to back games to Gilbert and ADM. Boone played a let's just say not a great non-conference schedule. Now, granted, Knoxville's winning games, but they're, they also didn't play that great of a non-conference schedule. Um, the Toreadors are led by June, Jude Baumgartner, 600, 764 yards, 10 touchdowns. Um, Lucas Bowsher, Boucher, also really good on the ground. Um, I like Indianola. I, they're pretty big. I mean, if you look at Indianola, they're the size of a 5A school. I mean, they, they truly are. Um, I like the Indians here. Take care of yeah. business. I'm going to agree with you here. I like it, Ninola. Um, I think this has been a rough little three-game stretch for him. I know they got that Carlisle win, but those Pell and Ballard games they really want, and especially that Ballard game I feel like they're going to really want back. Um, I like Ninola to get back on the horse here, get back in the win column. And uh, I think this is a team that just is going to be kind of tough to see going far, I mean, because they're, they're, they're so lenient on the run game, and then they've been running in not an efficient clip. Partly, I think, because of that strength of schedule. But they've got Boone, North Polk, ADM, and Des Moines North uh, these next couple of games. And uh, so I think it, it'll be interesting. It's a tough stretch uh, to kind of end the season on. So, But I'm going to rock with the Indianola in this one. Our 4A game of the week, Newton at 4-1, and one is on the road to take on the Pella Dutch. Pella is 5-0. and oh. Uh, the Pella team, I, in my true opinion, I think they are the team of destiny right now. I think they are firing on all cylinders. They're coming off a win against Carlisle. They beat Xavier. They beat Indianola. They beat Ballard. Newton has wins over Bondurant. They gave up 28 to Bondurant. Marshalltown, Norwalk, Dallas Center Grimes, and lost to ADM. So realistically, they've 
they lost the biggest game of the year so far, and they only lost by five. Um, Ian is really high on Newton. They have a lot of juniors. I think Newton's time will be next year. Truly. I do think Newton legit could go to the dome next year, but that time's not yet. I still think Pell is the better team here. Yeah. And I think that's fair. It's at Pella Pell, and we know Pella has been a wrecking for this game. I, this game is going to be extremely, I think extremely close. I think Pella is right now they're finishing games. They finished the Xavier game, got that win. And you know, they finished that game. The Ballard game, that was impressive week one victory. I think that right now, if a game's close in the fourth quarter, I'm extremely confident in Pella, and I think that's why I'm going to go with them. Deers has been on an absolute tear, and I think they've realized how good he is. Yeah. Or they knew probably how good he is, yeah. but now they really they get it, and it's tough for me to go with Newton here. They're both similar teams uh, with their identities on offense, but I, I just like Pella here at home. Newton very well. They're, they're – scary team this year they're not yes they're, i agree with you that next year window is for sure there but i think they're they have a legit window this year as well i don't think yeah. it's a it's a kind of like a gap year for them so we're both rolling with the dutch mm -hmm. all right 3a this is a one of our honorable mentions so this weight had this pick has weight four and one independence takes on five and oh waller catholic this is a home game for the golden eagles E.J. Miller and company uh, for Independence, 1,142 yards, 14 touchdowns this year. Waller Catholic, a really good back-and-forth uh, offensive attack from Drew Riley at quarterback, 436 yards, and then Michael Borman at the running back position. Uh, Tom Scherer actually is a dog <laughs> in the wide receiver position. He's run for 375 yards and five touchdowns and then caught 285 yards and six touchdowns. Um, Independence only losses to Decorah by seven points. Wallert Catholic as wins over Western Dubuque, Comanche, Clinton, Assumption, and Center Point Urbana. Independence won this game in 1914 last year. Uh, what do you think, Paul? Um, this is this is gonna be interesting. I personally, I'm going with the upset. I think Independence can take care of business here. Yeah, I don't I don't mind that pick out. It's tough. That Western Buke win is definitely something to look at. I know Western Buke just got yes. stumped by Waverly Shell Rock, but that was a quality win. We don't – I'm not sure we 100% see that with Independence yet. We we know they lost to Decorah, and Decorah is a good team, but we kind of have them on kind of respectfully fraud watch right now with their 5-0 and record with those right. one-score games. So it's this is a tough pick. I think it's a touchdown-level game. I, I think Walhart gets it done at home. Um that rushing game has been phenomenal this year at 1,200 yards and 7.7 .7 yards of carry. So I, I think they get it done. But it's a, it's a good game, and it's going to be intense. E.J. Miller's a dog. 14 tackles for loss – or 14 sacks already this year for Wallet Catholic, 10 interceptions. E.J. Miller as a sophomore ran for – or as a junior last year ran for three touchdowns in this game in a 19-14 winner for the Golden <laughs> Eagles. Um, What's up? How does that score even have 19 to three <laughs> touchdowns? What are we doing? Two, two missed PATs or go for two. So, um, yeah. So we're, we're split on that one. All right. Uh, four and one Bishop Helan. We'll go to Carroll to take on the four and one Carroll Tigers. Nobody's really talking about Carroll this year. Um, this is a team that is pretty well versed in what they do. Carter Essick runs the or passes the ball well. Taden Peterson runs the ball well. Uh, Casey Thomas really is a star. 836 yards, 14 touchdowns. Bishop Heelan does not pass the ball. They run the ball. And even then, Carroll still outdoes them in the rushing category. But does what outweighs? <laughs> you know, does a championship level experience from Bishop Heelan outweigh Carroll here? It's a it's a tough pick. Um, the one win we're kind of looking at with Bishop Heelan is that week one Kemper win, and I feel like that's just. I mean, I also want to say Council Bluffs Lincoln's only loss is Heelan right now. I don't know the rest yeah. of the teams Council Bluffs Lincoln has played, but Council Bluffs Lincoln is also a good win right now, at least. Yeah, and the Sioux City East wasn't like a. They were. It was a close one in the fourth, and then they just kind of scored another touchdown. Yeah. And, wrap that one up so i don't know this is an extremely tough pick i do want to note crescin only scoring seven points i get there one and four but that team has played some crazy competition and yeah that that offense can score i believe weston trap 
is their guy there, and he's been going crazy. I'm pretty sure they held with Gilbert for a bit, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I, I believe I can. Yeah, they did. They were up at halftime. <laughs> yeah, so this is a really good Carroll team, a really good Bishop healing team. I, I'm going to rock with Carroll here, which I am I was a little surprised that I'm going with them. <laughs> He's with surprised good, by himself. <laughs> yeah, um, with how good Bishop healing usually is. But I think that there's a little bit a, le- a drop off from last year. And they beat MOC Floyd Valley, who we're about to talk about. I I'll roll with Bishop Helan. I just history says I'll roll with Bishop Helan, but I would not be yeah, surprised. No, they'll have the best game. football yeah. player on the field with Case and Thomas. So yeah. It's a it's a tough pick. It's a 50 50 pick. MOC Floyd Valley at three and two goes on the road and takes on five and oh Sergeant Bluff Luton. Sources are saying this Sergeant Bluff Luton team is legit. Uh, Isaiah Jervik, 325 yards on the ground, or 325 yards in the air, 331 yards on the ground. You don't know what he's going to do. Xavion Ellington, 417 yards on the ground, two touchdowns. Uh, Blake Albers is the leader in the passing category for MLC Floyd Valley, 1189 in the yard category, 50 rushing yards, uh, 15 total touchdowns. Really, uh, Rushing-wise, Sergeant Bluff Luton absolutely blows MLC Floyd Valley out of the water. The Dutchmen have lost to Carroll and Central Lion George Little Rock. SBL has beaten Lamar, Sioux City East, Sioux City West, Harlan, and Boydenhall Rock Valley. I will say it's not the best schedule in the world <laughs> for Sergeant Bluff Luton, but mm. wins are wins. Uh, MLC Floyd Valley won this game last year, 28-14. Uh, I got to roll with SBO, but don't be surprised if we see something happen here on Friday night. Yeah, um, I agree. I, I, MLC Floyd Valley can definitely throw the ball as well for what they don't do in the rushing category. You know, SBL kind of just whops them in that, but it, it's MLC Floyd Valley is kind of a pass centric team this year. Um, that Sioux City East win is very impressive, in my opinion. And then to also shut out Harlan, which yeah. I know it's not the same Harlan, but that's ridiculous that's an extremely impressive i'm gonna go with sbl here um i think they're wrecking ball this year yeah i think it'll be a lot, a lot of fun i think it's gonna be a great game finally before we get to our big game of the week for 3a solon at 5 and 0 will take on three and two benton solon won this game 16 to 13 last year do you believe that um yeah. let's take a look at uh who these two teams have played because this is fun solon beat mount Vernon seven to six and Benton lost to Mount Vernon 15-13. <laughs> Take what you will. Benton's coming off a win against Fairfield 29-14 before dropping games to Clear Creek Amanda and Mount Vernon. Solon beat Clear Creek Amanda 42-14. I think Solon wins, but the Benton defense clearly is not awful and could do something here. You just never know. But Solon has wagons in the backfield with Ty Bill and Eddie Johnson. Yep. Uh, I like Solon here as well. I think that this team is just kind of uh, just too good defensively this year. They've been their defense is winning them games right now, and then that rushing attack just leans into it. Um, one thing I will say, I think Ben very well has the capability to make this game ugly. I think they're going to make it not a satisfying blowout for Solon. I think it's yeah. like Solon gets to twenty eight points, but I mean Benton's going to be at like fourteen or ten, and it's going to be like just a low scoring rushing attack. So give me the give me Solon here, but Benton is a team that just hangs around with them, and they very well could do that. Clear Lake versus Algonan, the Paul Arridge Recruiting Bowl is up next. Yep. Clear Lake is four and one. Algona is five and zero. Oh. This quarterback battle is awesome. Jason McIntyre, a sophomore, nine hundred eighty-two yards, seventeen touchdowns. He's got a good tailback, Alex Kerr at receiving end, along with Thomas Meyer, and then Algona's Alex Mensky, obviously one of the top quarterbacks in the state, 1,184 yards, 15 touchdowns, no picks, uh, only one interception on the season for Clear Lake. Taking a look at last year, 29-28, it was a thriller. It was an awesome game. Clear Lake's only losses to Waverly Shell Rock by one. Algona has beaten Spirit Lake 42-40, Forest City, Esterville, Lincoln, Central, Boyden, Hole Rock Valley, and Charles City. Oh, boy. I don't know, man. <laughs> this game is going to be awesome. Yeah, this is – last year these were 
instant classic. Um, it was pretty insane how good that game was. It came down to like a two point. They went for two or something. It was just yeah. a crazy, ridiculous game. Um, what we're going to see here is Algonas had four weeks but I, I believe to just prep for this game. I know that's re- kind of harsh to say for their competition those four weeks, but they haven't really had a real team threaten them for four weeks. Um, Spirit Lake that week, one game was huge for Algona. Clear Lake has had to play Waverly Shell Rock, and that game was ridiculous. They very well could have a win, and that's a team that's bigger than them in 4A. So this is like literally we're playing with super thin margins here. This is a coin toss game. Uh, I think – Algona gets it done this time. Um, I think that last year loss gets them over the hump, but this is a Clear Lake team that's, I mean, really really good at rushing. Uh, Thomas Meyer is a freak on defense and blocking in the run game, so extremely tough pick, Um, but I think Algona can get it done. I would love to be impressed by Algona's defense because right now a couple of scoring columns where you're like, dang. I will say when I watch the film – a lot of those are for like pull starters and they drop third. Gotcha. Games. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sophomore quarterback on the road. That's a very tough bet. And you have a senior in Alex Bensky who is very good, very talented. <sighs> I got to go with Clear Lake. <laughs> I think the Lions are very good. Um, that Waverly Shell Rock loss easily could have won that game and we'd have an easy 5 0 versus 5 0 team. Um, I just like Clear Lake just a little bit more. Um, I think a little bit more well-rounded overall. Um, a little bit older in the receiving and rushing category. I think they can outweigh Algona. I think this is going to be an unbelievable game again. Um, but I got to go with the quote-unquote upset. I think Clear Lake gets the job done on the road. And I bet we see these teams again together in the playoffs. That's just my bull pick. But I'm saying they'll probably play each other in the playoffs uh if not at the dome so very fun will be a fun game all right to a five and oh west lion at number one taking on cherokee washington at four and oh um paul cherokee washington is one of my dome teams i need them to show up they have a home game here jackson paul's red has been playing great blake lovell's been playing great but bryson childress also doing his own uh, wins for West Lion over Western Christian, Unity Christian, OABCIG, Lawton Bronson, and Sioux Center, while Cherokee has wins over Central Lion, Ridgeview, Sioux Central, MMCRU, and lost to Western Christian. <sighs> I hate to say it, Paul. That West Lion defense might just be too much. <laughs> yeah, that West Lion defense has given up, what, one touchdown or two touchdowns? This They've year? given up uh, 20 three. points in five games. Yep. Yeah, ridiculous stats for them. They did it last year as well. I remember their defense was like silly good too. Um, it's it's impossible to not pick West Line here. I know Cherokee Washington's a team that has pieced together some big wins, Ridgeview and Central Lion, but it's just you can't not you can't overlook this defense and what they've done to opposing offenses is ridiculous. I think it's just one of those games where they're gonna play right into a Cher- or West Lion's hand, which is we run the ball. And West Lion can handle if you run the ball. So I think West Lion gets it done. Two and three, West Liberty on the road to take on five and oh, Northeast. People may be like, why is this a game? I'll tell you why it's a game because stats say this could be a really good game. And Northeast is five and oh, but that schedule ain't up to par. Uh, that's why they're ranked number six <laughs> at five and oh, probably the lowest out of the undefeated teams in 2A. I'm going to get a lot of hate for this, Paul. But West Liberty has won two straight after coming off losses to Regina, Wilton, and West Burlington, teams that all have more than four wins on the season. Uh, They are led by their quarterback, Riker Dangler. That is a name. 299 yards on the ground. He's also run for 972 yards passing, 299 on the ground. Gavin Kramer is very good. He is also doing the same exact thing except more. 639 yards passing. 833 yards on the ground for Gavin Kramer. I'm going to get so much hate for it, but I think the Comets upset Northeast. Mm. On Friday night. I really don't hate that pick. If I'm being honest, uh, this Northeast team, I kind of, we, I feel like based on their ranking, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just I, I feel like based on the ranking, I just say kind of new, like we got to wait to see this team really go. Cause five and O team, I believe they're slotted even behind teams that have a loss maybe. 
I'm pretty sure that they, they uh, are. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. So I think they're waiting on this one. There's just no standout win here in Makakita. Mek- was a close Makokita, one, I think. Yeah. Makokita. Um, I I think I might ride your pick here. I might go with West Liberty. I think that's it's gonna come good. back to bite us so hard. But I just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it kind of remind me. It's not Tipton of last year, but it's close. No, Kramer's legit. I think. Kramer's no, he's crazy. he's very good. I'm not yeah. gonna say that. He is a very good quarterback. And these two quarterbacks faced off last year. Um. But I just the schedule makes me believe Liberty's been through more and has seen more, whereas Northeast has just not. It's just hasn't been too bad. Gave up twenty five to Command, gave up thirty three to Makokita. You know, it's just I don't know. But five wins might be enough to put you in. I think they. I don't know what their schedule is the rest of the year, but I don't know. So, all right. Well, sorry, Northeast. That's just kind of that's how they got Tipton and Animosa left. Animos is four and one. Tipton is two and three. So maybe take one win there and you're in. Just get one win. Maybe four and one was. Yeah, maybe it is. Four and one West Burlington taking on at four and one Central Lee. Uh, we talked about Central Lee earlier this year. West Burlington only losses to Mid Prairie 42 21. They did beat Minneapolis 21 19, beat West Liberty, beat Mount Pleasant and Wapolo. Central League coming off a loss to Albio. We both called that, Paul. Um, and then a wins over Davis County, Durant, Cardinal, and Van Buren County. Central League don't score the ball very often. <laughs> uh, they are led by Caden Calfee, 167 yards passing. They don't pass the ball. They run the ball, 499 yards and seven touchdowns for Calfee. Meanwhile, West Burlington is a little bit more attacked. They can pass the ball just a little bit. They also run the ball well. Um. Give me the Eagles because although these teams don't pass the ball well, Hawks. Yeah, the Hawks, uh, or the, no, the Falcons. <laughs> Sorry. Whoa, <laughs> there's so many I'm birds. West Burlington. <laughs> I'm taking West Burlington in this one. They're the better team on the ground. Yep, riding you there. I I think West Burlington gets it done. Um, I think centrally, just that offense cannot put up legit points. I think this is a game where they would really need that, and I don't think they are going to be able to. So, um, give me the Falcons. All right, two and three Mid Prairie versus two and three Minneapolis. You might be thinking, why is this game on here? Well, it's because these two teams are actually not that bad. Mid Prairie's losses are Wilton, Regina, Sigourney, Kyoto. Minneapolis's losses are Sigourney, Kyoto, Regina, and West Burlington. So take that as you will. Mid Prairie beat West Burlington. So, Paul, are we going to play the game of you beat this team and you lost to this team? Because that's what I'm thinking I'm going to do. <laughs> Mid Prairie is led by. Brady Weber, 963 yards passing. And then also Hudson Ehrenfeldt is really good on the, on the ground. 575 yards, 221 yards all around. Um, shout out Noah Schmidgall, 812 yards, 11 touchdowns. Uh, I, hey, I don't know. Yeah, 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 what do you think? That, he's the one that made that all the Iowa high schools in a state graphic. Oh, yeah. Well, shout yeah. out. Yeah. That kid needs um, to make his name bigger on that post because that thing blew up, and I he put his name so small in the bottom right hand corner. Yeah. Well, you know what? Yeah, case, yeah. Give me Minneapolis. Give me Minneapolis just for now. Wow. That's wow. It. I'm gonna go mid prairie. Sorry. <laughs> um, I, <laughs> I don't, I'm not even playing the whole. They lost to this team, so that's how that works. Because we've been bid on that, Blake. I think like fifteen dollars. Yeah, it happens. So, <laughs> you can so, have a stinker one night and show up and just smoke another team. So. Yep. I, I, I'm going to take Mid Prairie, um, but this one's really close. I like that you picked this one. It's like a big I, one for RPI. I, I know the games, man. Our quality oh, yeah. tool. I have noticed our quality tool knows how to pick close games. <laughs> like they oh, yeah. usually turn out to be really good games. Um, so yeah, that's cool. All right, our 2A game of the week. I hope you like points. Four and one, Kemper Catholic at number five, taking on number seven, Des Moines Christian at four and one. I feel like this game is dope every single year. Uh, Kemper Catholic wins against Underwood. AHSTW, Roland Story in Greene County. Only loss is to Bishop Helan. Des Moines Christian wins against Pella Christian, Clark County, Southeast Valley, and Sadell. They did lose to Van Meter. Uh, in their wins, they've only given up six points in four games. They gave up 24 points to Van Meter in the loss and did not score. 
Uh, Van Meter or Kemper has given up 14, 33, 28, and 32. And Kemper won this game last year 61 to 7. I don't remember that. <laughs> but what do you think, man? Yikes. That that's a tough stat to overlook. Uh, last year's meeting, I know it's different teams. They had didn't DJ Bonami, and I, I believe Jet Each is a transfer. Yeah, hang on, so let me tell you. So in that game last year, Tate Platt was a senior. He's gone. Mm -hmm. They did have a freshman Davis Talkheim running the ball for him. They did have a wide receiver. Uh, Brock Batting did it all <laughs> in that win for Kemper. They were up 35 nothing at the end of the first quarter. Yeah. Man, I don't want last year's game to affect my picks, but – that's hard. I think I think Kemper gets it done, but I don't think it's like that this year. I don't think it's a 35-0 first quarter game. I think it's a close one, um, judged by seven points maybe. But give me Kemper. That's Kemper is also beat Underwood, which I know they haven't been great this year, but I think that's still a decent win. And HSTW is a good win too. Yeah. So, I, yeah. Yeah. Give me Kemper. I, Kemper has the better – schedule um besides van meter des moines christian schedule just has not been great now granted you know putting up points scoring 85 against clark um yeah i'm gonna go with you i think kemper but not by much i would not be surprised if everybody picked kemper in this game when we see the mm -hmm. graphic tomorrow but i don't know all right two and three west branch we're going to 1a two and three west branch taking on five and oh number two regina down here in 1a uh, we just haven't talked about Regina a ton. I apologize for that. They've just kind of slipped under the radar. Paul has him in his dome picks. Kyle Tracy is a – boy, they're young. Kyle Tracy is a junior, 911 yards passing, 11 touchdowns. He's also run for over th close to 300 on the ground. Savion Miller's a sophomore. Uh, Regina's wins are over. Cascade, Durant, Mediapolis, Mid-Prairie, West Liberty – West Branch has wins over Cascade and Columbus Catholic. Their losses are to Williamsburg, Dyke, New Hartford, and Beckman Catholic, who are ranked all in the top five of their respected class. West Branch won this game 21-17 last year. What do you see, Paul? Oh, it's a tough one to predict, mainly because West Branch has just played some really good competition, and uh, Regina really has not played insane competition yet. So, tough one. You're kind of picking strength to schedule, which really tells the full picture. Um I do think this Iowa City Virginia team is really talented. I think uh, that Tracy has been great this year, and Tate Wallace is a really great tight end receiving threat. Savion Miller is producing. It's really young, but I think they get this one. Yeah, I, I think it'll be close. Um, I truly do. Uh, I just think I'm with you. I think Regina takes care of it. But, yeah, I think we're going to see a close one. Number seven, OABCIG goes on the road to take on West Sioux at three and two. Blake Wiggins, 362 yards passing, 232 yards rushing for West Sioux. Bryson Kolar is tossing the rock. Uh, 1,054 yards passing, nine touchdowns. He's also run for seven touchdowns. Jax DeGene, De the sophomore, also playing well, 365 yards and five touchdowns receiving. Uh, OABCIG this year only losses to West Lyon 33-7. Their wins aren't great by any means. ELC, ESAC County, MVA, OCOU, and Ridgeview. Uh, West Lyon beat MVA, OC, AOCOU. Lawton Bronson lost to Central Lyon, Georgia, Little Rock, Boyden, Hull Rock Valley, and beat Hartley, Melvin, Sam Warren. I like OABCIG in this game. Yeah, I'm going to agree here. I think OABCIG gets it done. I think that that Ridgeview win is pretty impressive, and then I think their only loss with West Line, they just ran into a team that's very capable of not losing this year. So I'm going to go with OAB, OAB CIG as well. There you go. 4-1 and one, Dyke New Hartford, ranked number three, taking on 4-1 and one, MFL Marmac. MFL won this game last year, 34-14. MFL also made the Dome. Uh, Bulldogs only lost this year to Wakan 28 to 12. They beat Crestwood, New Hampton, Applington, Parkersburg, and Sumner Fred. Dyke New Hartford only lost this to Grundy Center. Wins over Central Springs, Sumner Fred, Osage, and West Branch. I will say Dyke New Hartford played Sumner Fredericksburg way better than MFL Marmac did. Um, Colin Meester's playing great. Uh, Noah Borchurting for Dyke New Hartford also playing great. Uh, I think experience helps them out. Plus, the Dyke New Hartford defense is just really good they've only given up six 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 zero twenty one <laughs> yeah 
yeah, they've been on a tear after that Grundy Center game. And we know how good Grundy Center is. I it's hard not to pick them. They're they're a wagon this year and they're gonna be really good at and MFL Marmac that loss to Wakan, I don't need I don't think it's as impressive as a loss to Grundy Center. So give me Dyke New Hartford in that one. Three and two East Marshall, four and one Hudson, the Mustangs and the Pirates. Hudson is coming off shell shocking loss to Albert at 47 to six. They do have wins over North Tama, Cascade, Jessup, and Columbus Catholic. East Marshall is coming off back to back losses to Grundy Center and South Harden after wins over Eddieville, Blakesburg, Fremont, Sadell, and BCLUW. I do think Hudson gets back on track here. Uh, Keenan Kreil, uh, their quarterback, 671 yards passing, 509 yards on the ground. Um, good senior leader. This is when you need the senior leaders to come up big. Uh, I like Hudson, but I think this will be a really close game actually. Yeah. Um, absolutely brutal loss last week for Hudson, but I think, I think they know how to win. I think that was just a team that's Albernet's a good team. They're, they're a team that's scary this year for playoffs, especially without that their records panning out. So give me Hudson, but, um, I think, yeah, I think they get back on track here. Our 1A game of the week, number one Grundy Center on the road at 5-0 to take on 5-0, number six South Harden. The Tigers. Paul, I have looked at this game a lot this week. I have South Harden going to the Dome. I did the whole, let's look at who's played who and how they played against each other. Grundy Center's best win is Dyke New Hartford, 21-7. South Harden's best win is Albernet, 49-19. So... Take that as you will. Uh, Grundy Center beat East Marshall 42 to 6. South Harden beat East Marshall 48 to nothing. Grundy beat Applington Parkersburg 43 to 7. South Harden beat him 56 to 7. Um, <laughs> Peyton Welch, 921 yards passing, 13 touchdowns. Jackson Drury on the ground, 719 yards and 12 touchdowns. South Harden just behind them in passing yards. They're way better than them in rushing yards. Why? Tell me, Paul. Why will Grundy Center win this game? Because I really want to pick South Harden. <laughs> yeah, it's this is extremely tough. You look at everything you can do for scheduling and like what yeah. they've done. You can say, for example, I mean East Marshall six point difference between the teams. You can say that Albernet is a pretty impressive win, but I feel like Dyke New Hartford for Grundy Center. A lot of Dyke New Hartford's respect right now is coming from barely losing to Grundy Center. So yeah. it's it's not even that big of a oh they well Dyke New Hartford's a top five team, so they have to be the uh now the better win. So then I went back and looked at last year and I'm like, okay, what happened last year? Grundy Center won this game 42 to 14. Peyton Welch Perfect. did play, did not do Wait. well. Six of 13, 42 yards. Jackson Drury, 16 carries, 93 yards. But Colin Gordon. Yeah. Eight of yeah. 10, 215 yards, five touchdowns. Colin Kanak, but Tieran Volks is back. <laughs> three catches, 122 yards, and three touchdowns. The dude was Randy Moss last year in the win over South Harden. Does it just come down to it, Paul, that we can't pick Gr South Harden because Grundy Center's Grundy Center, and they're on they're on the longest wing streak, aren't they, in the state? I think so. Um, I'm I'm gonna go with Grundy Center. I think the big thing here is. This, I, I picked against them week one against Dyke New Hartford, and they just shut me up. I can't do it again. This is a coin flip game. South Harden's been amazing this year, but I, I think we got to go with the Spartans here. Hang on. I haven't I mean, made my Judd, pick Judd, Judd Jervoski, or Jervoski, however you say it, has, in, has 10 incompletions this year. That's just ridiculous. In high school football. <sighs> We're talking high school football where a good completion percentage is like 65%. He is at 86% completion percentage. All right. You know, I'll, I'll take Grundy Center. But if South Harden wins this game, <laughs> I am not. It's a, it's a double L for me. I ain't going to shut up. I, but I want – just know, any South Harden fans watching, I want to take you so bad. I do. I really, really, <laughs> really do. But I'm going to play it safe and take Grundy Center. But I would not be surprised in the slightest if Grundy Center loses this game. All right, we're on to Class A. 3-2 and two South Central Calhoun taking on 5-0 and oh Wes Hancock. Uh, I cannot believe Wes Hancock is 5-0. and oh. I can't believe that they're still this good after all they lost last year. 
South Central Calhoun, kind of one of those sneaky teams. Their only losses this year are to ACGC and Riverside, two very good teams. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Wes Hancock obviously has got that really close win over Garner Headfield Ventura, 22-20, but ever since then, they have just kicked it into high gear. They beat San Ansgar 21-20. I threw this in there because I think South Central Calhoun can be a tricky playoff team, but you can't pick against Brady Bixel and the West Hancock Eagles. Yep, I completely agree with you. I like what you said about South Central Calhoun. Those losses aren't even that – like they're nothing to be sad about and write home about. They're, they're going to be a good, scary playoff team. I assume RPI is going to get them there with that schedule, especially when you're playing West Hancock as well. So, yeah, give me West Hancock, but – May, I, I think I could see this being like a two possession game. That's a team that's played good, good ball, yeah. good ball teams. Riverside yeah. has been really good this year, and then ACGC is like really, really good. So, yeah. Speaking of ACGC, five and zero, number two, they head on the road to take on two and three. IKM Manning, IKM Manning's losses are Earlham, Riverside, and South Central Calhoun. Both South Central Calhoun and Riverside came within one possession. Uh, they only lost to Riverside by eight. ACGC beat Riverside last week by eight. I uh, gave up 42 points in that game. Not ideal, but Riverside has a very good offense. Jathan South is obviously one of the best quarterbacks in the class. He's a very good runner, very good passer. Mike Fuller's really good. Um, ben Ramsey, not too bad this year in the passing attack for IK Manning. They actually pass the ball more, but they turn it over more than ACGC, much more proficient. Um, I think the Chargers take care of it, but – I wouldn't be surprised if I can have Manning hangs around here a little bit. Yep. I'm right there with you. I think they're kind of in desperate mode with who they've, they've had a really tough stretch here. They played Earl Riverside and South central Calhoun. That's it. And then now you play ACGC extremely tough stretch, but I'm going to go with ACGC. I think that Jason South just has been too good this year. Mike Fuller as well. And yeah, that rushing game is at eight yards to carry. And that's just ridiculous. Four and one try center number seven taking on two and three St. Albert. St. Albert, another one of those teams that is losing games, but they're they're to very good teams. Woodbury Central 35-27, Underwood 40-13, and Trainer 28-23. Uh Tri Center is five and oh. Best win is over Trainer 27-21. Excuse me. They're four and one. They lost to AHSTW 26 to 21. Very good defense. They are led by Carter Kunze. Uh, or Coons, 818 yards, 14 touchdowns. This Tri Center team is very good, like sneaky good. The only downside is they've thrown nine interceptions this year, but they're close to almost a thousand yards rushing and passing. St. Albert could trip them up, but uh, I like I like Tri Center in this one. Yeah, I'm with you. I'll go Tri Center, but I I think St. Albert keeps it close. Cole Hobbs has been great this year. I just think it's it's a pretty big mountain to climb here. And Linville Sully, three and two, goes on the road to Mount Air, four and one. Jackson Ruggles, I feel like he's been there forever, has he not? Boy, this is a young team. 509 yards passing, 379 yards on the ground. Dyson Thompson, a sophomore, 516 yards on the ground. Uh, you know, Linville Sully lost a lot from the team last year. They turned the ball over quite a bit, seven interceptions already this year. They do play really well on defense. I think that's what makes up for it. They have losses to Madrid and Pleasantville, wins over Wayne, North Mahaska, and Danville, and then Mount Air wins over North Mahaska, Central Decatur, lost to Madrid, beat Wayne and Nottaway Valley. I like Mount Air's defense just a little bit more. Uh, Linville Sully gets up a little bit of, little bit of points. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I think that I'd agree with you. Mount Air gets it done. Um, that's a team that's just been on a, on a tear after that Madrid loss. Um, yeah. Give me Mount Air. I, I think that rushing attack two is six yards a carry, and then Linville solely only giving up or getting 3.1. I think that's too big a decrepancy to look over. So, Our Class A game of the week, Newman Catholic taking on St. Ansgar. St. Ansgar is number three in the state. Newman Catholic is four and one. St. Ansgar is four and one. Passing category, Newman Catholic is better behind their sophomore quarterback, Thomas McGuire. 801 yards, passing 10 touchdowns. St. Ansgar has played the better schedule, as you would have expected. Wins over Nashua, Plainfield, Bellman, Clemmy. Lost to West Hancock, beat North Union, beat Osage. Newman Catholic wins over Bellman, Clemmy. Bel excuse me, Bellman, Clemmy, South Winnesheek, Lake Mills, and West Fork did lose to Central Springs. Um, it's a sneaky game. I think St. Ansgar takes care of business. 
but shout out Isaiah Keston. I mean, this is a very respectable Newman Catholic team that could make this a ball game here if St. Ansgar isn't careful. Yeah, I'd agree. I, this is a team that can pass and run the ball. They're pretty balanced, but I just agree with you. I think St. Ansgar takes care of business that Wes Hancock wins. got to be sticking with them. Or loss, yep. sorry. Yeah, yeah. And finally, our eight player games of the week. Iowa Valley, number eight at five and oh, taking on Winfield Mount Union at three and two. Paul, tell me about this Iowa Valley team because I don't think people are talking about this offense enough because they are truly unbelievable. And they had did they have a bye week last week, I think. Yes, no idea. they had a bye week last yeah. week. Yeah. <laughs> tell me about this Iowa Valley team. They I mean, led by Nolan Kriegel has been ridiculous sophomore. this year. He's only a sophomore. Yeah. Can run the ball like crazy, but he also can air it out. He no picks this year yet. He's got an insane amount of touchdowns. Very hard to not pick Iowa Valley in this one. And they're a team that I think eight is gonna end up being too low or too high. Sorry. Um, I think that they are a better team than eight. Sorry, I was messing up the lingo there. Dude, they but. have scored 70 points in four other five games. Yeah, and Waco's the team that they only score 56 yeah. against like like that this offense is too good to pass up i think yeah. winfield mount union i mean it's just a they lost Buffett literally an all-american linebacker last year so um and waco just pointing at those two games waco we did the whole they beat them they lose or and they lost to them so give me iowa valley i think this is a team that's very scary in, in eight players here a team above them in the rankings that I feel like we have not talked about. Number six, Audubon at five and zero, taking on two and three, Glidden Ralston. Uh, Glidden Ralston's schedule is so brutal. <laughs> they lost to Woodbine, they beat Arweva, beat Colonesco, lost to Baxter, lost to Collins Maxwell. They lost to Baxter by two, and they lost to Collins Maxwell by four. I feel like when you lose like that in eight player by less than five, you just kind of shoot yourself in the foot and you're just like come on what are we doing audubon had wins over cam colonesco uh zyra ehk st edmund and coon rapids bear shout out st edmund we don't do recaps for the past week st edmund went to gtra and gave him a heck of a fight despite us all picking them uh gtra ended up winning gtr way won tonight they are six and oh shout out to the mm -hmm. titans um audubon is led by carson wessel 471 yards passing, 533 yards rushing. Paul, this is the classic. The quarterback does everything. Uh, he runs and he passes. Audubon's just a little bit better in the air. Yeah, uh, it's hard to not pick Audubon. Uh, I mean, Glenn ralston has been through murders row. This year. Yep. So tough for them, especially an eight player. I feel like that's really weird to be through like yeah. a really tough schedule. I because feel like then you'll get like Remsen who has won. This is their first game. big yeah. Yeah, this is like their first big game of the year. Yeah, interesting. I'm going to go out of man. Yeah, but. Our eight-player game of the week, number nine, Bell Plain, taking on Montezuma. Bell Plain, the Plainsmen are 5-0. and oh. Montezuma is 5-1, and one, so the stats are a little skewed. Take it as you will. Bell Plain has beaten BGM, Moravia, Melcher Dallas, HLV, and Clarksville. Montezuma has beaten BGM, Winfield Mount Union, Melcher Dallas, Moravia, lost to Southeast Warren in the first game of the year, 50 to 44. Um, Montezuma is led by Brady Bolton, the junior. He does it all. Ty Alcott also does it all for Bell Plain. Um, I know we don't talk about defense a lot, but I like Montezuma's defense just a little bit better in this game. Yep, I'm going to agree with you. I think that they, they're defensively are better. I like Brady Bolton as well. Um, <laughs> But yeah, that family it, it, bunch of dogs. Yep, they got two good quarterbacks here. Should be a great matchup. But I think Montezuma comes away with the win. All right, we're both going with the Braves. I could tell I was deteriorating as the stream went on because <laughs> it's almost midnight. Paul's got to get to sleep so he can sleep. Uh, make sure to send Jack your picks because I just made my picks right there, so I might have to remember. What I did. But um, it's going to be a good football Friday. I will not be doing anything i'm not calling a game so i'll be watching um oh, yeah. so i can hop in discord with you and figure stuff out so oh yeah baby. um it's gonna be a fun night of football hope everyone enjoys it thanks to everybody for watching uh thanks to everyone who watched on tuesday or our wednesday video for our dome predictions uh not a lot of people have taken that too hard on themselves so that's good uh because i'm already 
probably regretting some of my dumb picks. But well, all right. I do well, feel like we haven't come out with a graphic for it yet, and that's why we haven't heard anything. I didn't. I was hoping you weren't gonna make one anyway, because I was like, <laughs> first of all, four of us making eight or seven picks would be a very big graphic, very confusing. But oh yeah. All right. Um. Yeah. Have fun, everybody. I know it's a big homecoming week. Uh. So have fun at homecoming if you're having homecoming. Uh. Yeah. That's all we got. He's Paul Erich. I'm Blake Walker saying so long. We will see you guys next week. Make sure to like. Make sure to subscribe. Thanks for listening. Just passed now. Yeah.